Let's have a quick talk about this awesome Torek 660. Now that I've done 10,000 kilometers with this bike this summer, I can finally say something about it from experience and not just talk shit out of my ass. So I thought I would make this 10,000 mini review. So let's start with the pluses of this bike. There's a lot of them. <laughs> the first I'm gonna tell you is the rider modes on this bike. It is fantastic that this bike can be switched from mode to another mode on the fly. You don't have to stop to switch off the ABS or the traction control or go switch through the different rider modes. The second thing that I have to mention about the rider mode, it actually remembers them. So if you leave the bike in off-road mode, so you have traction control disabled or you have some predefined level one, for example, enabled, it remembers the settings when you go to eat somewhere or if you leave the bike overnight in the garage, when you leave the next morning, the bike is in the same settings. So the traction control, ABS, everything is off if you have left them off the previous ride. So that's something, I don't know why every single manufacturer doesn't do that, but that's for some reason one of the big benefits on the Aprilias definitely. I like the custom rider modes. You can customize most of them, not all the settings in all the different rider modes, but you have one fully individual rider mode and then you have traction control levels that you can adjust on the fly on the different modes and all the settings are remembered in the bike's memory. So if you ride off-road mode with the traction control set to level one, it's always gonna be in that level. It's not gonna default to some weird Aprilia setting. It's gonna remember what you like to do on that mode. So that's a very big benefit on this bike. One more thing about the traction control. If you put it to off-road mode and you put the traction control to the lowest setting, number one, it's gonna allow you to drift the bike and play around off-road, but it's gonna save you if you go overboard with the drift. That's when it's gonna catch and try to help you a little bit. But other than that, you don't really even notice it in the level one and you can have a lot of fun with the bike. Also knowing that the bike is going to help you a little bit if you go a bit too far with it. And the next thing is the air filter location. It's up here on the bike. So this is not a fuel tank. This is the air filter box. So if you go to a deeper ravine with the water, the bike is going to gasp air through here, very high up in the bike's frame. Not here like it's in the Tenere 700 or, or CF Moto 450 MT, it's not under the seat. This difference is a lot if, if you go some uh, deeper river crossing or anything like that, this distance might save your bike. So I definitely prefer that the air intake is on the highest portion of the bike. Also I have on this bike the Unifilter foam filter comes with the pre-filter set if you buy them separately and that's a very nice design for group rides you can just clean the pre-filter or have a couple pre-filters already oiled and clean when you take a longer trip and you can just swap in the new pre-filter so that prolongs the washing of the main filter quite a long time next the ergonomics the ergonomics of this bike is absolutely perfect for me i don't feel that i have to do anything with the ergonomics i don't have to twist the bars into some weird position to feel comfortable even touring the bike or off-roading i don't care what i do with this bike it is perfect for my frame and i would see any rider up until 190 centimeters tall can feel comfortable with this machine so the absolutely fantastic ergonomics and reaching the ground on this bike is definitely super easy because it's so narrow between the legs. Most competitors like Transalp 750, Tenere 700 and the KTMs are very fat right here and that makes reaching the ground very awkward if you're a little bit shorter rider but with this machine no such issues. The weight and balance and I might as well say dynamics of this bike so on and off-road this feels super nice and I think the main thing about that main, main reason for that is the bike carries its weight very low on the frame so it feels really balanced even if you do very slow riding very technical riding or even in town when you come to a stop on with luggage even the bike feels really balanced and easy to control so I would say that this is even a really beginner friendly bike it's a little powerful looks of course but even beginners are gonna feel at home with this machine and experienced riders are definitely going to appreciate 
the fact that it's it's a very easy bike to control even though it weighs 200 kilos surprisingly this bike is also very fun on twisty roads it feels like a road bike it handles so it's so playful and fun i don't know how aprilia does it but they are a road bike manufacturer most of all so they kind of did some magic on this bike and it feels really fun on the twisties as well so that's a big big plus that I have to mention here. Two plus wheels as standard is a big bonus in my opinion. This kind of bike kind of feels correct with the two plus wheels. Stock suspension on this bike is absolutely fantastic for a stock suspension. Of course there are some racing setups, Erlings and stuff like that that you can buy that are probably better but for my use case the suspension has been plenty good, good enough for me. I weigh 80 kilos something like that plus my riding gear and when I travel I carry about 15 kilos on the bike so I've had no issues with the suspension even the stock springs are fine although when I carry the luggage I have to crank the preload all the way up in the rear of the bike so uh, you could go with stiffer springs but I don't really feel that the bike needs it for my weight at least really quickly the wind protection is really nice on this bike it's really wide the fairing so you don't have much wind in your chest or hands or anything like that. The stock protection is really good. You will get some air in your helmet, but even riding fast on the road, too fast, illegal speeds, I can ride using this kind of helmet, just tilting my head a little bit down and the air is gonna go above the helmet. So it's not gonna ca catch on the lip. So I think the wind protection is adequate here very good you can add a lip here if you want a little bit taller windscreen but i don't even feel the need for it one big benefit of this rear design is also that there's no painted plastics here in the rear of the bike so if i use my krieger luggage that i have these uh, straps here for i can just put the krieger luggage on top of this plastic section and nothing is gonna wear out or look bad after i've ridden this bike this is now dirty of course but the plastics here look absolutely brand new even though I've traveled five six thousand kilometers with the Krieger luggage on this bike this rear design for soft luggage is definitely awesome fuel range is a really nice big bonus on this bike it has an 18 liter tank it mostly is here under the seat which helps with the balance as well but the 18 liters mostly when I do TET riding light off-roading I can reach up to 400 kilometers of range with this tank so the fuel economy and range on this bike for this kind of machine is kind of perfect I love the brakes on this bike very confidence inspiring very strong braking power cruise control is really awesome for long distance cruising the quick shifter works really nicely it's not completely 100% buttery smooth on each direction sometimes it's a little twitchy going down but it's overall pretty nice equipment and you should probably get one if you get this bike it makes things a little bit easier and uh, kind of fun actually then i have to mention the clutch it's much lighter than lighter to use than the tenere 700 standard clutch i can use this with with two fingers all day long it's really nice the mt450 clutch was even lighter and my crf clutch is crazy light <laughs> it doesn't require any it's just you just think about the clutch and it goes but it's very nice one of the lightest clutches on this segment definitely on the Touareg even though it's a cable clutch it's really easy to use in do two fingers now we should go through the, some of the negatives that I don't like about this machine first thing is very known on internet that this bike is runs quite hot and it's really noticeable if it's 24 degrees plus you can definitely start to notice the engine heat if you do some technical off-road riding and don't really have a lot of speed you can absolutely feel it in the right side of the of the bike cat is producing a lot of that heat but i have noticed that it's also coming to the left side of the bike not as bad as right side but the left side of the bike is definitely also noticeable in some situations so the head of the engine is also pretty hot and it's a pushing the hot air somewhere here where your knees are on the bike so in some situations you can definitely notice that the bike is quite hot and it can also also be quite uncomfortable in that in hotter climates especially but in my Norway trip there was not really that much hot days so it was pretty cold weather I had no issues I didn't even notice the engine heat 
but definitely on warmer days you're gonna notice that the bike runs pretty hot here in your legs. One thing I don't like, I have a short in my, my uh, channel about this, I don't like the oil stick. It's nice that there's an oil stick, but I would like to have a side glass on this engine. It's so nice when you get used to the side glass design, you just check the oil it takes a couple of seconds but in this you have to fiddle with papers and try to try to fiddle with the oil stick and always open the engine so you have to clean it around the oil stick so that's a minor inconvenience but I definitely think it's a negative that is worth mentioning here. Then I have to mention this because some of the competitors not a lot of them but for example, CF Moto gives three year warranty without any kilometer restrictions. I think that should be the minimum for every manufacturer. I think the bigger ones are always two years and so is the Torek. I think that's a bit short for an expensive 20,000 euro adventure bike. This is like 18,000 here in Finland. I think three years without kilometer restrictions would be a better warranty for an adventure bike that is meant to last for a long, long time. and. Uh, take in a lot of kilometers before you have any issues so two years I think it's a bit of a negative for any brand to offer that kind of a warranty even CF Moto can t give you three years without any restrictions so come on BMW KTM Aprilia you can do better you can give us three then some of the reliability on this bike. This is definitely no Yamaha and no Honda. I know there's a lot of riders that have no issues, but I know there's a lot of riders that have had many of these issues that I've had with this bike as well. First of all, I've had a broken thermostat. It was broken in the brand new bike. The moment I started riding from the place I bought the bike from, I started noticing immediately that the bike is losing engine temp. So I knew immediately that the thermostat must be jammed open. Then we changed the thermostat from another 23 year model bike and the same issue continued with the second thermostat. The third thermostat that we tried was from uh, the parts catalog ordered online. So that thermostat kind of felt different and looked different and was really a lot more smooth to the touch, the spring. And when we put that thermostat in, there has been no issues with the third thermostat on this bike. The bike is working perfectly. So if your Torex starts dropping from two bars to one bar in almost any climate, you know the thermostat must be open. So you should check it out. Second issue is the fork issue on the suspension. I have a video about it. I will link it down below. You can check it out there. But there is an assembly issue on most, if not even all Torex 660s on the forks that every owner has to figure out how to fix. Under warranty, it should be but I just went to a suspension specialist and got it fixed. So check the video if you want to see more about that. Then I have a third issue that just came up before the 10,000 km service. The chain tensioner that is right there on the engine side. It's very quick to change and the part cost only like 70 euros. That needed to be changed under warranty. It started knocking a little bit. Uh, if, you, if it starts to make that sound that you can hear in this sample video. you have to check that it might be the chain tensioner going. So that's something minor niggle, but still annoying. Three problems before 10,000 kilometers, <laughs> maybe one or two too many, but it is what it is. Those are all minor issues, luckily. So I don't know any catastrophic engine problems with this machine. So Tenere was definitely more reliable. 20,000 with the Tenere with no issues. 10,000 with the Torek with three different issues. You do the math. Overall, in my humble opinion, if you objectively just look at the bike and the dynamics and the performance and all the equipment on this bike, I think this is probably, at least in my opinion, the best mid-size adventure bike on the market today. In my opinion, this is an awesome machine. And I do really hope that Aprilia will continue doing this Torex 660 and improving it overall little by little over the years and stick with it Aprilia because this is a great bike for this segment. I'm pretty sure I forgot to say something but if you have any questions about the bike I will 
definitely answer every single comment you put down below. If you, if you have a question in the comment, I will try my best to answer that. Without me rambling any further, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next videos.